Hey, Mystic Michaela spiritual family. Welcome to Know Your Aura with Mystic Michaela. Today, is your aura musty? We're going to talk about spiritual hygiene, and I'm going to talk about all the ways you can maintain it, and one of my favorite ways, and I'm going to end with a little meditation today. But first, hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. Scott, is your aura musty? Um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna, I mean, I've been... I've been called musty by the kids a couple times. It's our just teenager. Yeah, our our teenager, teenager loves that word. Yes. Um, I don't know if my aura is musty. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, no, I don't think it is. I don't, I'm not sure what that even means. So let me tell you what spiritual hygiene is. Okay. Spiritual hygiene refers to the practice of paying attention and maintaining your energetic self and also in all areas of your life, kicking out energy that doesn't belong to you and also calling back energy that might be stuck in other places and, and should come back to you. Okay. All right. So based on that definition, mm -hmm. and I think most of the listeners are not going to believe this, I'm going to rate myself like a real high nine. I like agree a with 9. that. 9.5. I agree with that. You're, you're real good at not feeling guilty yeah. about cutting out people, places, and situations that might like contaminate you energetically. Yeah. And I probably, you know, I would have never used the term spiritual hygiene. Yeah. I would never even have thought of it in a spiritual manner, but right. the way I am, like I cut that stuff out quick. If like, you so logically, I just cut it out. What is it? And this is what we're going to talk about today. So okay. I like to talk about things everything we talk about on here, I feel like we can talk about it in the woo-woo sense. But we like to make the paranormal normal. Right. And so I like to also talk about it. How do we all, how does this come up in regular conversation? So when you cut a person or a situation or something out, what are the feelings that you get first associated with like, mm, this isn't for me? Like, what's those, what are those feelings? What are the, uh, the feelings behind it? I mean, I guess I, when I know I, but someone's off, mm -hmm. maybe I, I don't know why they're off or how. You don't question it. Yeah, I don't you just question it. Off. I just know like, all right, we, we got to move on here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take too much time with this. I just okay. want to kind of. When something feels like a time waster, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, if it's a time waster. Okay, that's, and I notice that with you. So I can see very practical or logical minded people thinking at something that wastes their time. That's the worst for me. Yeah. yeah. I don't like to waste my and, time. And what that is, is that's a statement to the universe. Like, my time isn't to be wasted. My time's more valuable than to be wasted by this stuff, okay. which is a great spiritual hygiene practice. Oh. So you're, people are already doing it. I think a lot of us get told that walking away from things that are actually time wasters is mean or cruel or says something about our own character. But you don't have that problem. I, I don't think I've ever, no, I really don't. I mean, you know, I, I do, I try to get, like, if I see something, I can, and again, not from a spiritual, this is just from me logically. Yeah, just through logic. This is my red aura here. Right. You know, I can, I can sense the BS, like, okay. before it gets to, like, high levels of BS. <laughs> okay. Like, meaning, like, I, I could, I could kind of sniff it out and I'm just like, all right, I, I don't want any part of this. Like, I, I'm not into, I'm really not into drama. Yeah. I, do, I don't like drama. I don't get into drama. It doesn't like, you know, I know some people like watch the housewives and they love drama right? or maybe it's just an like escape for them to love drama. But for me, no, it's just like, I, I don't want to, I just don't want part of it. Like, as, soon, as soon as it's over, it's better for me. And that's a big spiritual hygiene practice, not okay. getting wrapped up in Yeah, I don't drama. like to get wrapped up in it. Like sometimes drama is cyclical and there's, if there's nothing you can do to solve it, what's the point? Right. You know what yeah, I mean? It, right. If, if there's something I feel like can be, be solved and I can come up with a solution to it, I'll, I'll go that direction. But if not, then... So you're on you're on the HOA, which yeah. is a big a big thing in Florida. Yeah. Communities have what homeowners association. Yeah, homeowners and you association. You have to be elected, and then you yeah. volunteer, and you've been on it for a while. Yeah, eight almost nine years, I think. And all it is is like, is that bad for your spiritual hygiene? Because it would be bad for mine. <laughs> because <laughs> people uh, really get mad about things. No, they do. I, to I just, you, I try. <laughs> I don't take any any of it. I take it all with a grain of salt, first of all. For for me, just being on the HOA, it's about logic and reason. And that's how I've always voted for nine years or eight years, whatever. <laughs> God. Logic and reason. I use my logic. Scott, and my 2024. Reason. Yeah. <laughs> logic <laughs> and reason. reason. And that's it. And if it's, <laughs> if it's not logical, I don't vote that way. So you know? maybe it's not upsetting to you because yeah. like there's rules already written down. And it's, it's logical. Like the whole thing is logical. So you can fall back on that. So you don't. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, if there's a like, if there's a rule that doesn't make sense, though, right. I, I'm for changing that rule. Okay. Yeah, like I mean, the, the the thing I remember, like when we first took over, like this is like eight nine years ago. Oh my god! The previous leader of the board had the kids waiting on the corner yes. of our development on a busy a street, very busy street, waiting for the bus. And we in the have morning, a pavilion bus. in the neighborhood, right? But we have a pavilion <laughs> that the builder of the community. Right. Created for the kids to, to wait there yeah. inside the community in safety. Yes. And like the first thing I'm like, and the, the rule was hey, the kids had to wait on the corner. Yeah. And to they me, I'm like, like that's awful. That doesn't make any, that's like that dangerous. Is, that's dangerous. There's no logic. There's no reason to that. Why would anyone in the world do that? Now there was pushback, believe it or not. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. We, so we switched the rule. We voted as a board. Again, I'm, I was only one vote. But to put the kids at the pavilion. Yeah. It was like the first that, thing you did. Yeah. yeah. That, was like, that was the first thing we did. And believe it or not, people came to the meeting. Wow! And were against it. I like put them on the corner. Yeah, <laughs> like, and I'll never forget it. It was just like the, like the the it was ridiculous. Do you understand? Like one wayward driver could have taken yeah. them all out. Like yeah. they don't care yeah. or something. And one, <laughs> I, it's still in my mind where one resident said, um. This is ridiculous. If I get, I'm leaving for work in the morning. If I get stuck behind the bus in the community, I have to wait for the, you know the kids to get on the bus, and they, yeah. you know they have the stop signs for the bus with yeah, the stop. Yeah, you gotta wait. And, and it was like <laughs> the biggest. Maybe you wait what forty five seconds, a minute, a minute and a half. Right. And for them, they they were upset by that. that wow. And I was just in my mind, I was just like, I. Like, I, I can't even deal with that. You know what I mean? Like, my mind is like... But I that wasn't bad for your... See, yeah. th- to me, I could... So, my, the reason why I brought it up is because yeah. I think different things based on who you are can be bad or good for your spiritual hygiene. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, for me, what you're talking about and sitting there and listening to that, that would have been very, very, very toxic for me. Uh, just because okay. of who I am and how I invest in things yeah. differently than how you invest in things. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So I think diff- So I think as we talk about this today, because I'm going to go into it more deeply, think about what's good for you might not be good for other people or what's good for other people might not be good for you. Right. And so it's also about knowing yourself and what is good for you or not. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess in, it, my, yeah. in my red mind, there's no way that I'm wrong on that. You know, like, yeah. and, I, and I can't like, because I, I, I went through everything. I went through every scenario. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I'm like, okay, I add everything up. And I'm like, there's no way it's wrong to put the kids in the pavilion and not on the corner of the street. Right. There's like nothing that trumps that. Right. There's that, no, Yeah. I think they were worried about waiting. And then I think I remember they were worried about if the bus hit the curb. Right. When it makes the turn. I remember okay. that the curb could eventually break down. <laughs> right. Right. Sure, I was like, sure, okay, sure. but that's not like a child's life. Yeah, no, no. And, <laughs> and, and then, you know. <laughs> I remember and, that. Right. And then at that point, once I realize that and I make that decision. Yes. Then it's like, I don't care what anyone says. See, if that was me. Yeah. I would have never gotten past that somebody thought a curb or waiting a minute or being late to work or, or thinking like you just can't wake up a little earlier and leave. Like that that's worth more than kids' safety. Like that I would be in a room of people that felt that way in their in their souls, I could that wouldn't be good for me. Right. But you can latch on to no, I'm going to stand up for this, and and it's fine for you actually, and you can actually argue it and fight it and have a final say, which is for me, I just couldn't get past that people thought that. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> like, and I still can't. But it's just interesting to think about what's good for us and what's not good for us and how it can be different. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's just, we're different people that way. Yeah. And I guess for me, it, it doesn't, if I guess if I was doing something wrong and I, then it might, then it like, you know, if I really, okay. but then again, I'm only going by my, this, like you always say, I'm Larry David, where I go by <laughs> this, the logic in my head. Yeah. And I always think that it's the logic that's correct. So that could be the downfall for me. Being we're all red, like that or, right no we're all like that because empath or is too like me as an indigo if i'm in some sort of victim mode or yeah. something and if i'm in a bad state mentally and i'm in a victim situation i can think like oh my gosh just taking that bus thing is uh 
as an example. Yeah. My gosh. You know, they don't care about my time. I have to run to work. I got to go to, I'm in my own cycle of, of victimization. And this is another thing yet again, somebody's doing to me to ruin my day, putting a bus in front of me the second I leave or something. And so it depends where, and you could feel like very vindicated in going to the meeting and saying that out loud in yourself. If you're, so that's why we all always have to do our personal responsibility, our work. We're, we're always working on it. We always have to check back with ourselves. I mean, it's a never ending process because we've all been in weird situations where maybe we were fighting from a, from a 3d standpoint instead of a 5d standpoint. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, I just, I had to bring that up because I thought, okay, there's different things and and different things that you do and I do that would make me feel bad versus you feel bad or my aura musty versus your aura musty. But we live with a teenager yes, and we hear the word musty (laughs) all the time. And that's what, when I saw the term spiritual hygiene, I'm like, oh my God, it's like musty because she's always saying like, you're musty or like, or like the house, it's musty. Or when she comes from home from school, she feels very um, musty. And then she's got to go upstairs and take like this really long shower. And then she comes back down. She's like, oh. (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I mean, and it's her vibe. She's really talking about her vibe. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, and I get all annoyed by it too. Like she comes down, and she's like, "This house is musty." <laughs> just, <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm just sitting there on the couch, like and she's like looking at me. She's like, "You're musty." Yeah, she really is looking at you. Yeah, and then and I'm just look. Let me, let me paint this picture. I'm on okay. the couch. I'm sitting there. Yeah, you know, I'm just watching something on TV, whatever. She comes in, like, musty, musty, this, that. And then she sits down next to me. Very nice. And I, I happen to not have socks on. Okay? <laughs> Fine. I had no socks on. Is that a big deal? <laughs> like, in the house, not to have socks on. But anyway, all of a sudden, I hear, like, this shriek of terror. <laughs> ah! Like, like God. I'm like, what? What happened? There's a cockroach. Isn't there? And right. Mama saw a cockroach, right? Right. What is and, it? Right. And she's like, I'm like, what is it? And she's like, your toe has hair on it. <laughs> You do have hairy toes. I, I can't even. Yeah. <laughs> like, you do. I didn't know that was a thing. Okay. I mean, you're a guy. There's nothing wrong with body hair. They happen to be quite long. <laughs> right. So I have like. They are hair, long. Like, where is it? Like hair. It was, they were, it's gone now. But there was like, like in the middle of the toe or whatever. Yeah. There's hair. Like on whatever that is. It's like your toe knuckle. Yeah. I don't know what else it's called. Like the, the toe, toe knuckle. knuckle. Is that. Okay. Is that normal i don't know i'm sure it is for you're like a guy and you have hairy toes yeah okay um she screamed and yeah. she said you know you had musty toes yeah like your toes are musty. and i'm like you know i look i if you're a long time listener to podcast you know i had the <laughs> the back blade and yeah. i had the bunny tail you're little, where it's like the hair you're real like, open on your hygiene. Yeah, you, you stop getting as open about your personal hygiene on here <laughs> as in the beginning of the That's podcast true. sorry we're going we're going back here again. so let's not go back okay there. so bunny tail <laughs> you guys have to figure out that is on your own go back to episode like two through four i think i talked about that <laughs> but yeah so and then <laughs> so yeah i don't know so it was really an easy fix i just took the razor and you know, just, it was gone in like a second. So you're trying to say like your personal hygiene. Yeah. My, okay. So my is yeah. worse than your spiritual yes. hygiene. My spiritual. So this is what you're trying to say. Yeah, my spiritual like hygiene. you're trying to say like like you really have a lot of faith in this today's topic. Like you're very spiritually hygienic. Yes. But maybe you need work in the physical hygiene. I part. would say 9.5 <laughs> on the spiritual, and then the physical hygiene. We're looking low fours. Low fours. <laughs> low fours. <laughs> All right, so we want to make sure that your aura is not musty. So I'm going to talk about that more coming up. Hey, man. Hey, man. What are we getting your mom for Christmas this year? Mom grass. What are we getting your dad for Christmas this year? Dad grass. What are we getting the admins of the Mystic Michaela Spiritual Family Facebook page this year? Definitely dad grass. What are we getting Petro Hanchar this year? Lots of dad grass. Well, there's no need to stress <laughs> over the holidays this year, then. We've got even those impossible to shop for family members covered. Dad grass now has something for everyone, including your most loved furry friends. Take the edge off and enjoy the season with their classic pre rolled joints, hemp flower, tinctures, gummies, and CBD dog bones. 
Dad grass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-rolled joints and flour are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. And now they offer a variety of products so you can toke or dose just the way you like, from their CBD tincture drops to the newly launched CBD gummies and flavors like Classic Blackberry Ginger, Good Time Hibiscus Lime, and Nighttime Midnight Berry. You can chill out without getting stoned. And Dadgrass didn't forget your furry friend. They also just released CBD dog bones, so everyone in the house can enjoy. All Dad Grass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dad Grass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Dad Grass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash K-Y-A. Go to dadgrass.com slash K-Y-A for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash K-Y-A. Scotty, why are you so upset? Uh, you know, we got that party to go to, the Mendelbaum slash William Hanukkah <laughs> holiday Christmas party or something like that. I don't know what to bring. Well, we have milk bar. It's going to be okay. Yeah, the pumpkin milk bar pie. This is the thing to bring. Yeah, and I want to bring the apple cider donut cake for sure. I mean, stressing over what to bring to all our holiday get-togethers, Milk Bar's got us covered with treats that are always a crowd pleaser. Because let's get real, everyone knows that dessert is the main event. James Beard award-winning celebrity chef Christina Tassi opened the first Milk Bar Bakery in 2008 in New York City, and she's been shaking up the dessert scene ever since with her unique spin on iconic flavors. And now you can ship Milk Bar's desserts nationwide. Milk Bar is the perfect gift for anyone and everyone in your life this holiday season. Just in time for Thanksgiving, for a limited time, Milk Bar is offering their delicious new pumpkin milk bar pie, apple cider donut donut cake, and apple cider donut truffles. If you act fast, you can also get your hands on their seasonal lab drop, pumpkin coffee cake cake made in limited batches straight from their experimental kitchen. Or opt for a classic milk bar pie, the famous cult favorite holiday treat made from toasted oat crust with a gooey butter filling. Every milk bar creation is made fresh, then thoughtfully and beautifully packaged so it arrives in perfect condition ready to enjoy. It's never too early to plan ahead. Place an order today to secure your treats and receive your desserts in time before Thanksgiving. All their treats are fridge and freezer friendly, so you can skip the stress of holiday shipping and get your desserts now. But if you waited last minute that need desserts stat, they also offer fast, even overnight nationwide delivery. Right now, Milk Bar has a special limited time offer. Get $15 off any order of $80 or more when you go to MilkBarStore.com slash K-Y-A. You'll get $15 off an order of $80 by going to MilkBarStore.com slash K-Y-A. MilkBarStore.com slash K-Y-A. I saw the term spiritual hygiene and I just loved it. I just loved it. And to me, calling back your energy is a form of spiritual hygiene. And I'm going to talk about all of that today. So what is spiritual hygiene? Spiritual hygiene, you can call it energetic hygiene too if you want, is the practice of paying attention and managing your energetic self. So if you think about it, we spend a lot of time cleaning our our homes we clean our bodies we clean we make sure our clothes look okay we we detail our cars we vacuum the garage uh anything we put value in we clean we maintain you don't want like a stinky house or a stinky body we don't want to be spiritually or energetically stinky either so this is about cleaning up your spiritual state of being as well as your physical ones People and the universe itself is going to be repelled by bad spiritual hygiene. Just like if you were to walk, I mean, it's not nice, but it's just what happens. Like if you walk in someone's home and you 
I mean, I'm, and it's just, it's bad. You know, there's, there maybe they have a hoarding situation or it's a little smelly. You're like, oh gosh, you know, it's not exactly the place you want to go eat lunch in. You know what I mean? And if you think about it that way, your energetic self, your spiritual self, your aura, your vibe, that energy bubble you carry around with you, that has the same feeling to the universe and to everyone you meet, you meet. And when you're not taking care of this vibe, this energetic space, this aura, this energetic body, you're you're going to repel things from you. And there isn't always going to be room to add new things with which enrich you because you're too scattered around trying to put out fires in a million places outside of you, and you don't have you know that that feeling of of peace with the vibration around you. It can have a low vibe feeling and you'll notice people, opportunities can subconsciously avoid you and you can feel a very low confidence. It's kind of, in a way, how you can feel to others, how they perceive you. And listen, I know you've met someone before and they've just been in a bad way. And so we've all kind of met someone and you're like, oof, they're a mess right now. Or, ooh, that's not, okay, that's a lot. You know, like just kind of like that feeling of you feel it, like that fatigue you get off of them or just, whoa, that's <laughs> that that's not getting solved anytime soon. You know, you don't want to be that person. And spiritual hygiene is a way you can maintain yourself so you're not. Um, now, I must preface this. We all go through stuff. And the what I hate a lot, what we all hate around here is um, toxic positivity. It You do not have to be Miss High Vibe 24-7. Crap happens. Sometimes you're just going through your feelings. You've had a heck of an eclipse season. <laughs> Somebody broke up with you. You feel like excluded from your friend group. You've been through a death in your life. So it's okay to have low vibe times. It's actually, it's important to go through those low vibe times. And we talk about the beauty of being in a spiritual slump. So I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you kind of are ready, just like every once in a while, I am sick of living in my stinky house and I just one Saturday, just go for it. That's what I'm talking about today. Let's do some spiritual hygiene. Let's talk about it. So when you do feel like cleaning up that vibe so that you can attract different things coming your way when you are in the space in the moment for that. This is how you do it. I think there are lots of times in our lives when we can experience a feeling of just being icky. But then what happens is we can normalize it. Perhaps you were raised this way and all your relationships kind of come in to normalize that feeling for you. Remember, like I say, we don't do what's good for us. We do what's normal for us. So if it's been normalized, that icky feeling of spiritual, you know, unhygienicness, then this is going to feel weird to you. And we don't realize that we keep ourselves in a cycle of it. And you might be really spiritually and energetically squeaky clean in a lot of places, but you have like one little vice that always pops up. Maybe it's a toxic relationship you always get into. Maybe it's the job. Maybe it's something. Maybe it's the way you treat yourself. There's There might be something that's not so squeaky clean. So we can focus attention onto there. Um, you know, I feel like when we spend time with the wrong people or we scroll and click on things on social media that just do not serve us at all, we engage with toxicity or we spend time with superficiality. We put ourselves in contexts in which we're not seen or honored properly. Basically, we throw away our God-given gifts on people in places which don't appreciate it or accept it or receive it in a way that's supposed to be received and all of this can leave us with a with a residue and when we do this it's like a part of us gets stuck there it's like you get stuck in that moment throughout time and you might not even realize how often you're grappling with it or thinking about it or it's affecting you or it's it's affecting your movement forward because you're subconsciously always remembering something that didn't work out in the past all that is going to make your spiritual hygiene a little less than what you want it to be. So 
there are ways that you can feel like you've been experiencing some bad practices with your spiritual hygiene. So here are some symptoms of feeling kind of that icky, that icky vibe feeling in yourself. You can feel really chattery in your brain, just like a lot of noise. Um, Therefore, it can be very hard to stay in the present moment. You're always thinking about something that happened and you're worrying about how to control the future. So you can be stuck between those two places and definitely not in the present moment. You may notice another way that you can notice your life isn't le- isn't very clean spiritually is um when there's just a lot of drama. Everything is happening, like everything. And you always know about it. There's friend everybody's calling you, there's just a lot of need, there's a lot of drama in your life all over the place. You feel like you're living on edge like waiting for the other shoe to drop constantly can't feel like you're you can't feel comfortable because you just it's like you're on high alert your adrenaline's like always up there ready to go you can feel really exhausted even though you're moving through life it can feel like you're moving through mud or smoke you can get sick a lot you can't focus on anything even things you enjoy it's really hard to sit and even read a paragraph without your mind wandering off uh, it's hard to watch a show that you used to enjoy. It's hard to be out in nature. You, you feel like you just have to keep moving because you can't sit. You cannot focus. You can be very addicted to your phone. So you start looking for vibrations that match the scattered one around you. So you, you know, scrolling on Instagram or TikTok and just looking for constant just adrenaline, just constant what's next, looking for that quick fix over and over and over again. You can be very emotional. You can very be very quick to anger. And another interesting little symptom is your money can feel stuck. Like <laughs> if you make some, it's spent right away. Or it seems like there's like a lot of uh, situations where abundance isn't flowing as freely to you. Because money is just energy. I need to do a whole podcast on that. Anyway, so how to practice good spiritual hygiene. So here are seven ways. Here are seven ways that you can practice good spiritual hygiene. Okay. So stop being around when possible. I mean, it's not always possible, but just try to not be around people and places which make you feel uncomfortable. If you don't want to do it, like don't. And the world won't tell you that, but I can tell you that. (laughs) Okay. So for example, I, I don't know if I told this story, but um, forever ago, I'm like, oh, I should get my daughter into Girl Scouts. This was a while ago. And she was like, yeah, let's go into Girl Scouts. Okay. And then we go. And I don't know if it was just, I could have tried better. Okay. I'm very purple. So it was just like the first troop I found and they let me in. It's very, it was really hard to get into any, any troop, but this one let me in somehow. Nobody spoke to me. Like nobody. And I'm friendly. I'm like, hi, how are you? Did it? And then they just like, eh. and then they just talk. And I thought to myself, all right, this could be just a group of people who they're tight, which I get. And sometimes when you deal with like a tight group of people, it takes a while. And I went for like six months with my daughter and they weren't really talking to her either. So after a while, I was like, I could stick through this because eventually they'll talk to me. If I don't go away and sometimes tight groups, yeah, it just takes tight groups a long time to accept you into their, and then I was just like, you know what, screw it. Cause I was dreading it every Sunday going I'm like, you know, screw it. My daughter, she wasn't begging to go either. She's like, yeah, let's not do this. And I was like, all right, <laughs> you know, if it, it wasn't I, whatever, you know, if it's not that big a deal, don't make yourself go to places where where it just doesn't feel great. Even if you don't think it's a big deal, it is because that's your time. And anything you do, if it's not serving you back, you're kind of giving a message to the universe like, hey, my time's not worth anything. And that is a little imprint in your vibe, in your aura, in your energetic body. And that feels icky. Number two, Another way to practice good spiritual hygiene, don't let people touch you if you're not into it. (laughs) Now, this definitely depends what kind of family you have. And you know I love to talk about their different cultures have have different, just I'm laughing because when I do readings, um, I don't know, just different cultures really crack me up. Like if you're Italian, for example, forget it, okay? You're going to a family gathering, everyone's pinching your cheek, giving you hugs, loving you up. Okay, I'm not talking about that. 
I'm talking about letting people touch you or use your body for their purpose and not a mutual one. How many times do we, and we can take this all over this place, but how many times, like if you're dating, if you're like, all right, I guess I should, I guess I should sleep with them, you know, because that would make, and, and are you doing it because that person wants you to, or because you want to, too, or do you only want to because they want to? I mean, you got to think about this because you can't let people touch you if you're not getting something out of it. And we could take it to another place too. Okay. How about hugging people or being in crowded spaces or letting people just get too close to you? If you're not comfortable with that, you don't have to do it. That's why I don't make my kids hug people. You know, it's like, what, you know, that's not necessary. So, and the, and, and when you let people touch you over and over and over again and they don't, And it's not something like you want to, you're just doing it to fit in or you're just doing it to make somebody else feel okay. It's not good for your your energetic health, your space bubble. All right. Number three, if you don't want something, don't eat it. Isn't this funny? I am, these are, these affect you more than you know. How many times? And again, (laughs) like again with the, the certain families, it's like you do have to eat grandma's food. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about kind of going out with people and they're like, no, eat it. No, do it. Oh, drink it. Have it. Do this. Come on. Guilting you into it or insinuating that you're making a statement about something, whether you do or don't eat something that's about them. You know, there's something with eating and it's putting something into your body. It always should be your choice. Think about it. You're putting something into your body. That is your choice. And sometimes people try to feed us or they try to give us things and you don't want it, but you're going to put it into your body to make them feel better, to make you feel really icky later. And a lot of us were programmed because of our family environments. Oh, I have to do that or I'm insulting somebody. But if this isn't your like 90 year old grandma, it's okay. They'll live. So just think about that. Uh, okay. Number four. Oh yeah. You guys already know this one. Watch out for what you wear that's secondhand. I am all for upcycling. I think it's great. I think upcycling clothing and jewelry, whatever you want, furniture, go for it. But anything that's secondhand, jewelry, clothing, furniture, items, things have energy. And You just want to kind of put your hand on it or kind of feel it. If it gives you any sort of tummy ache or like, "Mm," the second you just like take a step back, like, uh, that's a no. Any pause is a no. Sometimes you feel something like a, like a piece of jewelry or an item of clothing or furniture. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I feel like I know you. Or it's like home. That's a go. That's okay. But any sort of pause, no, I don't care what kind of deal it is. I'll tell you what, even no matter what clear it before you bring it into your personal space. So many of you are so much more absorbent than you think you are. So this is important. How do you clear something? Just bless it, put it in the sun, wave your um, selenite crystal over it or something. Just take a a mindful moment to say goodbye energy that does not belong here. Um, This is a lot harder to do with jewelry though. I will say jewelry, metal, Uh, stones. It's a little harder to do that with that. So be very careful with jewelry. That's not yours. Uh, Okay. Number five, I think I'm on. Okay. Oh, make, oh, here's it. Okay. If you receive a gift from someone, if someone's like here, okay. And you don't like them. (laughs) You don't like this person. They're giving you a gift. You're like, I don't want this gift. I had this client. She was telling me that her, my gosh, her ex-husband's new girlfriend kept trying to give her food and and like she took it because it's food and she felt bad like throwing it out but she was like feeding her kids that and stuff and it just she you could she just felt crappy about it and I'm like I don't know give it to somebody else or donate it or something but don't don't eat it and don't feed it to your kids if somebody gives you a gift and you feel funny about it either donate it re-gift it or refuse it don't keep it in your space for logical purposes. 
because basically you've just received their energy and if you feel icky about their energy now you have it in your space and you've welcomed it in to stay and that can make you icky feeling number six make i feel like i messed up the numbers so i'm really sorry but i think this is number six Thank you, Yellow Auras, for correcting me later. Okay. Make your body a priority in healthy habits. This is not about exercising to fit in to your skinny jeans from 12 years ago. Absolutely freaking not. This is about f- treating your body good and giving it love. I say treat yourself, and this is easier said than done, but try to get in the habit of it. Talk to yourself like if you were taking care of a child. Not into kids, taking care of your cat or your dog, all right? Time to take a walk, all right? Let's let's have something healthy before we have something not so healthy. Let's feed ourselves well. We deserve it. Let's go get some sunshine. Be good to your body. That really clears out so much ickiness in your energetic field. It's a really good spiritual hygiene practice. Just getting a little exercise and eating in a way that honors you. We got to eat, eat in a way as if you were taking care of yourself like you were your own kid or your own fur baby. All right. Seven, maybe. <laughs> okay. Try not to gossip. You don't always have to have an opinion about something. Try to see both sides of things. Sit with something before you speak or form an opinion on it. Overall, just be flexible in your thinking. After, and you know, I've had, this happens to me all the time too. It's like you engage in a conversation with somebody and then you're thinking about it and you're like, oh God, I don't feel good about that. I just don't feel good about that, you know? And the more you notice it, the less you'll end up engaging in it. The less, and, and you'll step away from those conversations too. And then people won't seek you out to talk about things like that because they'll know you're not into it. And then you'll attract new people in. There can be friend groups where people don't talk about each other. Trust me. I've been very, very lucky enough to find those in my own life. And you can find them too, where people actually love each other. I know it's crazy, right? If you're lucky enough to have those relationships now, you know how blessed you are. If you're stuck in relationships where you're worried if you leave the dinner table, everyone's going to talk about you. That sucks, but it doesn't have to be that way. And finally, is it seven? I don't know. Find joy daily within yourself. Just something that makes you happy. Try to find moments during the day. But the most important one, and I think this was eight. (laughs) I really messed up on the numbering. But this is what I was really getting into. The most important way I feel to practice good spiritual hygiene is through calling your energy back to you. And I am so excited to talk about this. So there are lots of ways to assist with clearing your spiritual hygiene, tidying it up. Meditation, crystals, salt baths, grounding, nature, getting rid of technology, helping other people. But honestly, I don't feel like anything helps more than calling your energy back to you. So what is it to call your energy back to you? Every single exchange you have with someone, you create a cord, a link, an energetic moment. This could be with people, places, experiences, even faceless entities like an online activity. When you do this, you are not a sovereign person spiritually anymore. You have left a part of your energy somewhere else and it's working and it's occupied and it's not serving you. Listen, there can be great places to put your energy And there can be not so great places to put your energy, but let's be mindful about it. Retrieving these pieces back to you are going to assist you in feeling more energetic, being able to find joy and find inner peace. And this is such an important and essential part of your spiritual hygiene. I find that a lot of us empath auras, that's indigos, purples, blues, and turquoises, are constantly allowing ourselves to be depleted as our way of interacting with the world around us. This is why it can be so hard sometimes to be social or even have relationships. There's this fear, this subconscious fear that you can't have your whole self when you interact with a person. 
in my readings, I've noticed in many, many cases that because a lot of you are so used to giving yourself away, your energy away in relationships that you don't want any more relationships. A lot of you end up connoting exhaustion and spiritual depletion with being in any sort of relationship. Because of the past, (laughs) because possibly how you were raised, like to love is to become an invisible fluff of nothing. And all you do is spread yourself thin and give yourself to people all the time and you become nothing. So that when I'll read you and you're finally single or something, you're like, oh my God, no, this is, this is great. I'm finally myself. And you have this idea that to love someone is to go invisible again, to go offline. And that's not true. It's just how you were programmed to love. Like that's, you have to find a new way to do it because in a good relationship, there is no depletion. There's only support. And you may not know what that feels like because you've never called your energy back to you in order to really experience that. And therefore by avoiding relationships at all or avoiding opportunities, challenges, experiences are all because you don't know how to go about them without losing yourself in the midst of them. But we can have your energy. You have control over your energy. That is something you actually do have control over. So that's what calling your energy back. And we'll talk about how to do that. That's, that's what this is all about. So when you learn to call your energy back to you, what you're really learning to do is calling your power back to you. No one is in charge of your energy. You are the only one in charge of it. You might think that to be loving or to be kind or to be a good employee or to be a good kid or a good wife means that you have to go invisible. Like I said, go offline. Just give everyone your energy, scatter it all over the place. Like bird food for like a thousand birds every day. Have nothing left for yourself. But you're allowed to call it back to you and you're still worthy. Every single piece of yourself that you've left in the past, in trauma, in relationships with which had no closure, in exchanges which triggered you, in ne- negative experiences and places where you weren't understood, all those pieces of yourself you've left with people in places who needed healing and couldn't or wouldn't accept it, and all the places you left for someone else to drain dry, now, today, you're going to call them back to you. And you will learn, as you do this more regularly, how to not only notice when you aren't feeling whole, but also to notice when someone expects you as part of the unsaid relationship deal to leave a piece of yourself with them in an uneven exchange. It will begin to feel icky. It will begin to feel extremely obvious to you. And you're going to end up avoiding feeling that spiritual ick that you used to find normal. So this is going to actually train you to avoid people that expect you to do this in places too. And that's really good. Because right now it might be fuzzy. You don't know the difference. But the more you do this little exercise, the more you will know the difference. This is not magical. It really isn't. This is just energy. Your energy isn't something that like doesn't exist. It's real. And you're listening to this obviously on a spiritual podcast, but this is honestly normal self-care, which just hasn't been really normalized. So now it has to go live here in the (laughs) woo-woo with me (laughs) and you. But honestly, this is important and it's great. We can teach our kids to do this and we can talk to our friends and and our spouses, our partners to do this too. So let's call your energy back. So this is like just a really short way to do this. And if you happen to be in a place right now where you can kind of just sit down, take a load off and close your eyes, do it. Otherwise, just listen and you can do this with yourself later because the goal would be to do this before you go to sleep every night. So find a comfortable place to sit and close your eyes. And then you're just going to breathe in and out a few times. Just take a moment to feel safe and whole. You're present. Nothing else matters right now. This is you time. You can take as much time as you need here to relax. Even if you want to pause here for a minute, that's fine. Take a little body scan now. 
as you continue to breathe in and out. And scan where it is that you've perhaps lost pieces of yourself. At this point, you might have a to-do list pop in your head of all the things that you feel like you should be doing instead of this. There's pieces of yourself. There could be an experience or a conversation that happened that's bugging you. You didn't even realize it was bugging you. A little email, a little phone call with somebody. Perhaps a person or a part of your life you just aren't at peace with. You find yourself on repetitive thoughts, cyclical thoughts over and over again without a solution. And try to just sit with it. And without feeling the need to solve this problem, just call your energy back to you. Imagine all the energy which is yours draining from whatever place that you find it occupied. And it just flows effortlessly back into you. There's nothing else you have to do except receive it. It knows how to find you. It's you. It knows exactly where you are. And just picture it like golden pools of light immediately finding you and re-entering your energetic auric sphere. There's nothing you need to do except call it back. And you can say this mantra either out loud or in your head. I call back all my energy to me at this time. I release any energy which doesn't belong to me. And you can sit and breathe here for a little bit and just enjoy the feeling of all your energy coming back to you. So this is just a very simple exercise and you can get much more complicated if you feel the need to, but that's it. This is your ritual and doing that before bed every night or part of your during your morning coffee routine this can help you just feel so much more spiritually hygienic. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. So did you do the meditation with us? Did you call your energy back? I did. I, I did the meditation. Okay. I really do enjoy doing these meditations. I always do it when you have an event like the 8-8 yeah. eight, eight or the eleven eleven coming up. And I feel I know where that half point is missing. So earlier I said I was like a 9.5 on the mm-hmm. spiritual hygiene scale. I mean, I'm actually going to lower that to a 9. And I think the point that I'm missing, that one point that I'm missing is it, the cats. The Did cats you feel your energy coming back to you from the cats? The, I, the energy, the pieces of you they hold in their furry little paws. Yeah. You, you brought them back Well, to I you. was trying to. It was overpowering. <laughs> I couldn't do it. They were clutching it. No, they're too powerful for me. They are. They're, the three of them have combined forces. <laughs> and I'm no match for them. It's like the three of you. Like... <laughs> I'm outnumbered with you and the girls, and I'm outnumbered with the cats. You so, put, you're such, you, as Brianna would tell you, you're fine. <laughs> like you're such a victim. I'm, I'm, to- I'm victim blue. I'm totally, you're such a victim. totally outnumbered here. I give my energy to the cats. I want them to hold it for me. Okay. It's like yeah. the things we delight in them make you suffer so. And I think it's time to just, yeah, pull that energy back, Scott. That's good. Bit. Yeah. That's good. I'm all, I, and then it really came to me during the meditation that I really have to get my hygiene number up because that's in the fours. You do. And I, you know, there's <laughs> you some do. things I'm going to do, you know, that I'm not going to talk about. Them, that's good. Yeah. I'm not talking about on air. We all do. I could call overtime now Thanks. and then start talking about that. I don't know. But <laughs> Jumanji, Jumanji. No, I'm not going to do it. Like. Jumanji? If you're going to Jumanji, you have to do personal hygiene. Yeah. If you're That's gonna play, just for yeah, everyone. If you're going to play, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just getting off topic. You know, I was so proud. Over time. Over time. Okay. I was so proud the other day we were walking to the gym to do yoga. Mm-hmm. And I thought in my head, and then I told you, <laughs> you know, this is the only podcast. KYA is the only podcast where we have the game of Jumanji. Yeah. You're the inventor of Strip I'm, Podcast. Yeah. I'm the inventor of Strip Podcast. And it's the only podcast that has overtime. So it's the only one. There's no podcast. If you hear another one, start having it. That's us. Obviously, you, you, you they ripped us off. From, they stole it from us. Yeah. yeah. So it, there could be, I, in the universe somewhere, there could be someone doing this, <laughs> but not on this earth. Not on the earth. <laughs> in the matrix. Yeah. In another portal. Yeah, there is it's no. It's possibly right, happening. No podcast <laughs> does strip podcast, Jumanji, and have overtime. Overtime is when you should probably turn off the podcast now. And if you don't, yeah, that's yeah, on you. That's on you. That's on you. These are your choices. <laughs> All right, well, before we wrap it up, we, uh, and we, you, this is going to come out, I think, on November 10th. Yes. Right? And then the next day is 11-11. That's a huge day. Oh, my God. 
that's incredible. Yeah, you're supposed to really get the – you're supposed to do something, like get the vibe up, right? So something like that. 1111 is, you know, an architect number. You create your own reality. You create your own universe. Your thoughts are your reality. And on 1111, it's like a portal day. Like the universe is taking a screenshot of your mindset to replicate. And just a lot of powerful energy, which can assist you in planting your intentions. We're going to do this together. Um, you can, if it's 1110 or even 1111 before, what time are we doing at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at 1111? Yeah, I think so. You can go to my website, mysticmichaela.com, the event section, and you know, click to join us uh, for our group meditation, which I'm really excited about. And Always a hit. Yeah. yeah. It's really powerful. It is, yeah. Like people are always like feeling it. And even if you're not like the best meditationer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, it's okay because your intention is that group think, like the group energy coming together and us all working it out together. And and that's really powerful. So I'm excited for that on 11-11. Yeah. I, I mean, me too. I'm really excited. Great things usually happen to me afterwards. No, no. Like what? I, no, I, can't, I, can't, I can't recall <laughs> anything. But there, I think there could be some great things. I mean, look, I was born at 1110. I know. And that said it all. That, there it is. You it's know, like, like God's like, you'll always miss the mark. Yeah. Like <laughs> no, I, that didn't happen. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. I, could, I missed it by one minute. I couldn't hold out one You're minute. You're such a victim. I couldn't hold victim out one blue. minute. No wonder the cats. The cats sense your energy and they're attacking it in an attempt to make you see your shadow self and fix yourself. Right. Good job, cats. <laughs> All right. All right. This podcast is for you and about you. And we're so glad you spent some time with us today.